consumer purchasing and protection. We are all consumers. We are all buyers. Now we're going to go into the why. What influences our buying? Beforehand, we looked at what influenced our planning. Okay. And we're also going to look at strategies for you to become a smart shopper. Section 4 of 1. Talking about consumer purchasing. Okay. And we're going to lead into the factors that influence our buying decisions. And there's three. First one being economic factors. So looking at the prices, looking at quality, brand name, warranty. Okay, I just bought headlights from a company in California. One thing that really sold me to buy from them was their warranty. In which if I have any issues, they would handle shipping and handling and would ship me free headlights, okay, for life. And that really sold me for the company. I actually had to use it recently and they honored their warranty to the fullest, which was great for me as a consumer. Secondly, social factors. Looking at hobbies, your friends influence. If, ever, if your friends ever influence you to buy something, that's a social factor. Look at advertisements, social media, commercials. All right. And the last factor, personal factors. Okay. Looking at your age, maybe a lot of people your age have a certain good or item. Maybe that influence you to buy something. Also look at your income. Okay, the amount of money that you make, can you look at it and say, oh, I can't afford that certain good or item or service. All right, this next slide has a graphic that goes more into detail of the three factors. So we have economic factors. Also look at safety, really big would say items like cars, convenience, social factors also goes into further media, such as magazines, newspapers, the radio, and personal factors going into items such as your ethnic background. Maybe that has influenced you to buy a certain product or service or even brand. Okay. Religion, geographic region. All right. So the three main factors. Now you have an idea of what influences us as consumers to buy certain items. So what has it influenced our buying decisions? This next part of the of chapter four is research-based buying and what I'm hoping you all become is research is a research-based buyer meaning you do your research before you buy maybe you do it now where you compare different products on the internet and that is very wise of you and hopefully you all can kind of turn and become a research-based buyer because it's very wise of you to do so and you usually end up with a better deal and you become a more informed consumer so the first thing before you shop you want to look at your wants and needs and identify them so for example if you just bought jeans and they ripped all right and you had a and these were a new pair of Levi jeans they happen to rip at school your needs would be you need a new pair of jeans not that you just need a new pair of Levi jeans I also want to get you out of just thinking brand name. Do not just go by the brand. Okay. I know, understand these marketers do a great job of selling you the brands such as Apple and Dre Beats that you kind of come up with a loyalty to a certain brand. Just trying to get you out of that line of thinking. You also want to gather information and know the marketplace. When we say gather information, look at different models, look at the prices. So, you want to look at cost. If you get a new phone, how much is the new Samsung? How much is the service contract? Are there options? And you also want to look at consequences to your budget. If you were to make that buying decision, how would that affect your budget? Remember, we just made them, and that is your month-to-month -month kind of list to follow, your financial statement to follow that we came up with. And you also want to know the marketplace. Are there any sales going on right now? What's the return policy? Is it a month? Is it two weeks? Is it 60 days, 30 days? Gathering all this information. Second, you want to weigh alternatives. Compare products. So compare features. Look at different designs. All right. I was in the market. I was looking for an alarm clock. And I my alarm clock needed two things. It needed AM, FM radio. And it also needed Bluetooth. So it can connect to my iPhone. If it didn't have that, I ignored that alternative because that's what I wanted in my product. With prices, okay, 
usually if you have a list of goods and you're deciding to pick which one, if you can if you can afford all of them, usually go with the one that's the highest in price because it usually comes with the highest in quality. All right. If you can't afford all of them, go with the one that will give you the most value. All right. And weighing alternatives, we, that also looks at brands and it also looks at sellers. So these are the first two phases of being a research-based buyer. As you can see, a lot is done before you even go to the store or go online and buy. And this is really the important part of this approach. The third phase is now we make the purchase. And you want to look at purchasing options. Cash for the entire item or good up front. Okay, and you're going to pay all of it in cash or you're going to finance where when we say financing, you're still going to own it, but you're going to want to have it on credit and you got to look at the interest rate because you are going to be paying interest and whether you need, and this can go for financing, all right, are you going to need a down payment? And if I go ahead further, you'll see it at the bottom right here. A down payment is a portion of the total cost of an item that must be paid at the time of purchase. So, for example, if you want to buy a house, you need to have a, spe a specific down payment before you can even move in. So, the cost of a house, let's just say it's $300,000, I may need a 15% of that $300,000 down payment up front in cash ready to be handed over before I can move in. So, you want to look at those two items as, as well when you make your purchase okay also don't be afraid to negotiate the price in reason within reason with buying cars for example you can negotiate and usually get some things knocked off or get it the price lowered and you also want to know the real price which is the price of an item and also any extra cost installation fees delivery fees you may buy a brand new TV you might think you're getting a great deal but they might charge you a really high delivery fee and also they may, may charge you an installation fee. So you want to know the real price. All those costs and fees combined, that's your real price. And then fourth, after the purchase, okay, are there any ongoing costs? Which, for example, if you buy a car, although it might be a $20,000 car, you still have costs such as gas, regular maintenance with your oil, and that cost of the car just keeps increasing, increasing, and increasing. So look at any ongoing cost. Note them after the purchase is made. And ultimately, changes in, in your needs may occur. Okay? And what you may want to sell or return. So being a reflective consumer as well, when you're done buying and you made your the, the decision, because then that will influence you as a consumer the next decision that you have to make. All right. So hopefully with this, having you all become research-based buyers, doing your homework before you just go ahead and buy and getting away from just brand names because you may find great value in a brand name that you may not have heard of that could possibly be better than the brand names that are out there now. And this last section of Chapter 4, talking about just some smart buying strategies that you can put into now all right and there's six that we're going to talk about and this will lead us into our taste test that we'll conduct on Wednesday first one timing of your purchases so right now a great thing to buy if you're looking at clothes is your winter clothes because now the weather's getting a little bit warmer people start wearing t-shirts and shorts no one wants a winter coat or sweatshirt. All right, it's your simple supply and demand.